Hello and welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, we are going to look at this circuit here, which is a standard generic op-amp configuration called an inverting amplifier. This circuit has a grounded non-inverting terminal and an input voltage applied through an input resistor RI, which is connected to the inverting terminal, and a feedback resistor from the output back into the inverting terminal as well. In this configuration, you get a controlled gain based on the values of the resistors and an output voltage that is 180 degrees out of phase with the input. When I say 180 degrees out of phase from the input, I mean that if the input is a sine wave that looks like this, then the output is a sine wave that looks like this. When the input has a positive peak, the output has a negative peak and vice versa. If the op amp is an ideal one or pretty near to ideal, then the voltage gain of an inverting amplifier circuit is negative of the ratio of the feedback resistor over the input resistor. And I'm going to spend a bit of time here showing you two different ways to derive this equation. First, we're going to do a simple derivation. And for this derivation, the two main assumptions that we need to make for this op amp are that the input resistance or the input impedance of the op amp is infinite. So no current flows into the inverting or non-inverting terminal. And the second assumption that we're going to make is that the open loop voltage gain of the op amp approaches infinity. There are other ideal characteristics like the output impedance is zero and the bandwidth is infinite, but these two right here are the two most important ones we need for our calculations. The consequence of this first point is obvious. All of the current from the input voltage flows through the input resistor and the feedback resistor. None of it flows into the op amp. The consequence of this second point is perhaps less obvious, but consider what happens if you multiply a number approaching infinity, as the open loop voltage gain is, by a non-zero value. Then that result will also be approaching infinity. That means that the difference between the voltage at the inverting and non-inverting terminal must be effectively zero. In other words, the negative feedback of this circuit will force the voltage at the inverting terminal to be equal to the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. So keeping all this in mind, how do we get a voltage gain equation of negative RFB over RI? To start with, if the voltage at the inverting pin is the same as the voltage at the non-inverting pin and the non-inverting pin is tied to ground, then the inverting pin must also be tied to ground. Since it is not actually physically tied to ground, we call this a virtual ground. So now we can use the fact that this is at a virtual ground and the fact that the current through RI has to be the same as the current through RFB to derive this equation. So the voltage across RI is Vn minus zero. And then if we divide that by RI, then we get the current through RI. And then over here with the current still being defined as going in this direction, the current through RFB will have to be zero minus V out over the feedback resistor. And then with a little bit of algebra, we get the equation we were looking for. Now let's do the derivation for the gain equation with just the assumption that the input impedance approaches infinity and therefore no current flows into the inverting pin or into the non-inverting pin. We can assume that AVOL, the open loop voltage gain, is finite as long as it's really big. And to derive the equation for the voltage gain, we'll start with this equation for the op amp and then substitute in values for the voltage at the non-inverting terminal and the voltage at the inverting terminal. And then we'll use some algebra to rearrange to get the closed loop voltage gain. So the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is at ground, so that's zero volts. The voltage at the inverting terminal, that one's a little bit trickier. It's the voltage here with respect to ground. And so what we're going to need to do is do a voltage divider between RI and RFB, but we only know that across those two resistances, it's V out minus V in. So that voltage V out minus V in, which is the voltage across the two resistors, times RI over RI plus F RFB, that will give me the voltage across RI. But I need to know the voltage at this point with respect to ground. So I need to add in the V in. So what I'll get for this overall equation is V out equals AVOL, open loop voltage gain, times zero minus V out minus V in times RI over RI plus RFB plus V in. So basically what I need to do now is a bunch of algebra so that I end up with an equation of V out over V in equals something. So let's start by distributing V out minus V in through these expressions here. And 
and now distribute the AVOL through these terms. Now let's bring the V out terms over to one side. We can factor V out out of these two terms. And then we can get an expression that's V out over V in by dividing V in on both sides of the expression and then both sides of the expression by this term right here. Now I can multiply Ri plus Rfb over Ri over Ri plus Rfb over Ri. So I'm effectively multiplying by one, but this allows me to cancel out some terms that are on the denominators. Now if I substitute Ri over Ri for this one here, Then since these terms have a common denominator, I can get Ri plus Rfb minus Ri. Now if AVOL gets really big, and it doesn't necessarily have to approach infinity, then the values of this term on the numerator and the AVOL by itself on the denominator will be much bigger than the Ri plus Rfb over Ri. So effectively this becomes insignificant, and we get negative AVOL RFB over RI over AVOL. Those AVOL terms cancel out, and we get negative RFB over RI, as long as that open loop voltage gain is big enough. And there is my inverting amplifier gain equation. So we've gone through two ways to derive this equation for the gain of an inverting amplifier. And in theory, now that you have the equation, you shouldn't have to do it again. Although, in reality, you probably will have to do that for an assignment or a test or something like that. For us here in the video, let's take this equation and put it to practical use on a simple circuit. So, let's say we have this circuit here, and the feedback resistor is 10 kilo ohms, and the input resistor is 5 kilo ohms. Very simple to figure out what the voltage gain is. We take that feedback resistor of 10k, divide it by the input resistor of 5k, and we get a gain of negative 2. So that means if you have a 10 volt peak signal being applied here, you will get a 20 volt peak signal at the output that's inverted from the input. So I've got the non-inverting amplifier built here in LT Spice. I have my feedback resistor of 10,000 ohms and my input resistor of 5,000 ohms. I've got a sine wave source with a 10 volt peak at 1,000 hertz. I'm only going to run it for 2 milliseconds here. Now I can click on my input and you can see my input signal right there, 10 volt peak. And when I click on my output, what should we get? We should get an amplitude that's twice as big and out of phase. And there it is exactly. Minus 20 volt negative peak, 20 volt positive peak. So there you can see the effect of this inverting amplifier circuit. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of the basics of an inverting op amp. If you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know when I post a new video. You can also check out my website for all sorts of info related to electrical and electronic circuits. The link to the site is in the description. You are an impressive and dedicated person for making it all the way through this video. I know you will be successful. Thanks for watching. See you soon.